I see so many cleaning business owners leaving tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table. And it's by making three very critical but very common mistakes. In this video, I'm gonna break them down so you avoid them. And if you're making any of these mistakes right now, I'll teach you how to fix them, which will lead to a way more profitable cleaning business and a much better lifestyle for you. So let's go. Mistake number one, taking every client. I know this can be tempting, especially for new cleaning business owners, but trust me, it's a bad idea. In your business, you should have an ideal client profile, meaning what characteristics make up your perfect client. For example, when I was doing luxury residential, my ideal client profile was this. Someone who works in a lucrative industry, like accountants, lawyers, nurses, or doctors, or ones who own their own successful business or ones who have a comfortable retirement. And they have to want regular cleanings, at least twice a month and no less, but preferably weekly. This means a few things. First, they will value my hard work and show appreciation for what I do because they worked hard to get where they are. Second, they will likely respect me because they no doubt have the respect of others in their field. And third, it means that they have the money to pay me what I deserve. And as for the regularity, it means I'll be able to maintain the home long-term. This makes them a client with a high lifetime value. Now that I only do commercial, this is my profile. Professional businesses with minimal customer traffic. Places like insurance agencies, accountants, law offices, banks, government buildings, and some doctor's offices. I stay away from retail stores, gyms, and places that are high traffic since they are always dirtier. They also need to only be open during the day, which makes it easier for me to sub out. And I want commercial clients needing at least three cleanings per week, no less. This brings in consistent income and makes for much easier cleanings. With your profile defined, it is much easier to know which potential new clients to focus on. And if you find yourself with clients that don't fit your profile, then work to find others to replace them. And when the time comes, don't be afraid to let them go. Mistake number two, underbidding. This usually comes down to a lack of communication, most often in defining a client's expectations. Do they want good enough or perfection? Do they have a list of tasks for you? Why are they unhappy with their current provider? If it's a repeat customer, like a weekly residential client or a daily commercial one, then put in the work to document exactly what services they are requesting. Otherwise, you run the risk of them saying things like, I thought you were going to clean the windows, or we expected you to clean the patio. This leads to awkward conversations, which can leave you feeling the need to do more work for free. So make sure you communicate well and document everything. Another factor leading to underbidding is not seeing the job first. And it's for this reason I recommend bidding in person, especially when they will be a repeat customer. Now the day might come where you can give rough estimates over the phone, especially if you're doing a lot of one-time cleanings. But if your ideal client is a repeat customer with a high lifetime value, then set up a meeting. Here's why. I have a 50,000 square foot building that requires three hours of labor a day. But I also have a 25,000 square foot building that requires two hours a day. It's half the square footage, but not half the time. And this is because the task list is very different from building to building. If I had quoted it over the phone based on square footage alone, I would have underbid it. Instead, I walked the property to understand their expectations. And this allowed me to ask lots of questions, bid the job correctly, and win the contract. If you have clients right now that you underbid, what can you do? Remember that price increases are a normal part of business. So when the time is right, have a conversation with the client and see what adjustments you can make. Sometimes that will be an increase to what you're charging and other times it will be a decrease to the workload. Either way, it will fix the situation. And mistake number three, a flawed marketing strategy. There are a lot of marketing tactics that absolutely have value, but there are many others that don't, leaving you zero return on your investment. For instance, most cleaning businesses don't need uniforms, don't need branded vehicles, don't need paid advertising, and don't even need a website. Some do, but most don't. And this leaves cleaning business owners spending loads of money they don't need to, which in turn means less take-home pay. The other kind of flawed marketing I see is sloppy marketing, usually on websites. When I look at my coaching student site, we identify the things that will drive clients away. Here are the common ones. No personalization, allowing clients to get a sense of what the business is all about. Confusing bidding calculators, spelling errors, stock photos that don't represent your area and market, 
annoying pop-ups, and a big one, no easy way to contact the business. When someone lands on your website, they are immediately looking for reasons to not trust you. So make sure your website and all of your marketing is building instant trust. And if it's not, or you're not sure, then have a friend or family member give you feedback. Or if you're in my coaching program, we'd be happy to help you. And one more bonus mistake, not being professional. The biggest complaint I hear about other cleaning providers is bad communication. So I'll keep this one brief, but it is amazing how much money you can make by simply answering the phone. Or when you can't answer, by returning missed calls in a timely manner. And when you do communicate, keep it simple, be respectful, listen carefully, and follow up on outstanding questions as fast as possible. If you do, you are sending the message that you take your business seriously, and that's all that most clients are looking for. Well, if you avoid these mistakes, then do you know what becomes possible? Your business will become so much more profitable and more enjoyable to run, and soon enough, you'll be looking to expand. To learn how to do that the right way, then check out this video next. What is on my lens?